in a world where ordinary men can excel doing ordinary things, this man has single-handedly lowered the bar. From the scrambled mind that brought you Mad Madness and Beagle Rare comes this underwhelming Friday night special event. Matt Porter is the Blendageddon 2 World Champion and the 2020 World's Top Whiskey Taster. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your glass and shake your ass for ADHD Whiskey Live. What's happening, everybody? Happy Friday evening. Friday, friggin' February the 16th. Happy belated Valentine's Day, all you lovebirds. <sighs> catch them. Catch them. Make sure you catch them. What in the heck is going on? Happy Friday evening. Man, oh man. Um, I know you won't believe this because this is something that has never happened ever in my whole life, but guess who's sick again? Yep. Uh, Jared from Barrel King was like, you get sick a lot. And I was like, no. I think you just notice when I'm sick because I have, you know, videos to shoot. And I think people probably get sick as often as I do. And then I realized that no, probably do get sick more often. Uh, my youngest, my first grader was home three days from school this week with a fever and like, just feeling like trash, and I'm like, guess what? Probably gonna catch that. Friggin' did it. Um, so a bit of a sore throat and feeling a little, what do you call it? Hot and cold flashes happening. Maybe I'm going through menopause. I don't know. But um, other than that, I still have my faculties about me. I can still taste and smell and everything. And I was not gonna check out on you guys on another Friday night because. I love you. I love you. 49er fans up in the chat first. It was early. Checking back later, he says. Zachary Campbell up in the his house. Um, Michael Whiskey Derg. Mike Widener's here. Logan Peters. Wendy Miller. What's going on? Jimmy C's here. Or was here. My mom's here. Love you, mom. Uh, Cinny Winnie is here. Josh Fritz. Christine Vasco, Michael S. Whiskey, Dirk. They already said that, did I not? Huh, maybe not. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Russ L., what's up? Bourbon Boss Man is up in the house. T. Jarrett, everybody's here. WJK, what's up, Bill? Frequent Flyer, spelt wrong, is here. But it's like a license plate. Can't get past me. Can't get it past me. Are you slammers up in the hizzy? Rare Brad? What's happening, Rare Brad? I wonder if my microphone's working. It says it's working on the on my camera, so that's a plus. It's got to be working. For show. The sexual vanilla. The $5 super chat. What's up? Hey, man. Big fans of the show. We only got our hands on one bottle of Penelope Rio and loved it. Is there a comparison that might be easier to find? I've never had Rio. Um, isn't Rio the isn't Rio the Amburana? Amburana finished? Is it a is it a bourbon or a rye? Uh, huh. I don't know. I know Dan Shook really likes it from the bourbon junkies. I'm not sure. Maybe have you had the RD1 Amburana finished rye? Maybe that's gonna be up your alley. Is it a rye? It's a rye, right? Yeah. No, it's a bourbon. That's right. Jeez. It's just green, so I, thought, I always thought it was a rye. Um, Amberana finished bourbon. Oh, there's some cinnamon. Yeah. Um, maybe this guy? What else did I see that was 
there's so much amber on stuff on the market now it's it's incredible i don't know but i've never had the rio i've never had it jimmy c love this opening yeah that's jonathan cook from a while back we should redo it um you know a more updated one but i love it too that's why i play it even though it's a little bit you know behind the times he even met he even said we should redo it and i was like yeah we definitely should, but I didn't tell him that. That's my bad. Eric Sawyer's here. Mike Conklin, Whiskey Talk, Donald Hale, Jeff Little. Hey, Matt, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Jeff. Shammy is here. What's going on, Shammy? Just John is here. Oh, heck yeah. Um, um, listen, if I can do it, I'm doing it. Because I've only got, what, two more weeks after this before my mouth gets ripped apart. So, uh, yeah. As long as I was able to, what did Dan and Sean just, I thought that they just did a, another, oh no, that was their um, Virtue Ever North Spirits bottle that was honey and something else. Mike, sending your stream to the TV, almost life-size Matt is over the top. Oh, well, give a big life-size hug. Reaching into your living room. Oh, fellas on Google, whatever. And then you'd be like, ah. But you'd also be like, oh. I get really close. Like, you're wearing the virtual goggles. And I'm like, hey. And you're like, man. You smell like whiskey is what you would say. I'm not buying one until you can smell. Barrel Ambron is pretty good, says Tammy Blue. All right. Whiskey talking to pour your latest NBC bottle. Hells yeah. Pour it. Why are all the rye labels green? Mm. Just so you can tell that they're rye, I guess, possibly. I don't know. They've there, That's been a question that's been around for many a year, many a year. And I've never heard, heard um, an actual proper answer on it. So no idea. G. Jarrett. J Hub double oak, old oval in the glass tonight. This one right up my alley with all the sweet oak. I got that. We're drinking that tonight. It's right here. I got I got that same bottle right here. I haven't opened it yet. We're gonna get to that. I've got a few bottles I want to get to. Um, I have that old oval, the J Hub double oak one that you talked about. Um, I wanted to taste this live. I've had a couple pours of this, and it made number eleven on my whiskey of the year rankings but i want to retaste it live it's number 23 c and i want to talk a little stag in a little bit also have um, jack daniels distillery series straight tennessee whiskey finished in oloroso sherry casks this one they sent me months ago and i never got to it it was released in december 2023 so i'm not sure if that's still in their gift shop or not but um we're gonna taste that and a couple from Westward. A couple weeks ago, I got out of my seat and I tracked down a bottle because I wanted to talk about it. And I'm not sure if I ever talked about it. It was the Westward Whiskey Milestone American Single Malt. And I'm not sure if I ever talked about it or if I just got out of my seat for nothing. But there's that one. And then the newest one that they had just sent me is this um, Vienna Malt. It's a single malt, American single malt, Vienna malt, Westward whiskey. But before we do all that, it's been a long time since we've done um, what we call a one ounce Wednesday. So, so let's do one live. Let's do a blind pour live out of the one ounce Wednesday box and start there. And then we're going to get into the Patreon, ask me anything. Made a little post about an hour ago on Patreon, so I'm going to answer some Patreon questions while we talk tonight. Got a box here. Don't break. Don't break. I got it. Uh, hiding. Yeah. 
you guys see what that is? Hold on. Is it even in the, in the, no. Okay. Can you see what that is? You might be able to, you might not. I don't know, but maybe. Anyway, let's give it a pour and eventually a score. One ounce Wednesday style. I had a band of bowling ball, so we don't know what it is. Now let's get into it. Nobody say what it was if you saw what it was. Giving it a swirl and a twirl, almost 200 people in chat already. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. It means the world that you hang out with me on a Friday friggin' night because I don't know what in the world you got going on, but it's nothing except for this. Look at this. Come on. Unless you're on your way to do something cooler. That'd make more sense. I hope ADHD knows that flex. What flex say? I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know either. That's no idea. What's up, Richie Z's in his house? Sean Holgrave? Because rye is a grass, and grass is green? I don't know. Okay. Butterscotch. Dusty butterscotch. It smells like, to me, this smells like a dusty whiskey, but... I've been confused lately on dusty stuff where I taste something or smell something that I think is dusty and it turns out it's not. The last one was when I was live streaming with Cameron and he sent me like a 2017 Michter's Toasted and I could have sworn it was a dusty whiskey and it was not. Or I thought it might be a cognac or something. But this has all the qualities of a dusty bourbon like a 1980s or older bourbon. Something that was distilled then, maybe? Yeah. Very butterscotchy and very sweet and very sticky smelling. Jack Daniels 12 or Booker's Mighty Fine? Which one's Mighty Fine? Doesn't matter. Jack Daniels, 12, all day. Cracked Tennessee tonight, amazing bourbon, but the marketing could use some work. Uh, that's the first comment I got on that sticker, except for the Tennessee part. But yeah, the marketing. Yeah, this reminds me of an old, like a library, library books. And if you do, like if, it sounds stupid. People are like, that sounds dumb. Your pet's a pretentious note. Well, guess what? Stick your face in a library book and then stick your face in this bourbon and you'll be like, oh, smells like old paper, ink, and alcohol. It smells like a drunk librarian. Shh. Quiet down. You're in a library. Hmm. Yeah, the more I nose it, the more I'm second and third, um, thirding. I'm, I'm doubling and thirding down on this being something a little bit older. All right, let's go in for a taste, whatever this is down the hatch. It is sweet and light on the palate. Now, there's, man, that's going to spill on my keyboard. That'd be really stupid. Hear me out. There's not a ton happening as far as like a burst of flavor. That could be a look into things to come tonight. I don't think that my palate is off at all, but it could be. I'm not ruling it out. I haven't tasted any whiskey today, so. Hmm. It maintains a little bit of a dusty quality. It is not spicy whatsoever. It's more like a sweet, delicious, straightforward, like... Hmm. Second sip. Sub 100 proof. Hmm. 
Got a little bit of a bitterness on the back end, but nothing crazy. I would think this is maybe, maybe that bitterness is coming from oak. Um, hmm. Based off the nose, I thought I was going to enjoy the palate a lot more. The palate is, doesn't have a ton going on. It's very like straightforward, very like zip and it lingers for a bit, but it's not like escalating or changing in any way. Distillery? Don't know. Proof? No control bourbon today, so I'll just 90, 90 proof. Something old. It's good. I would say if I had to give it a score if it were one ounce Wednesday, um, the nose is tremendous. The palate, depending on how well my palate is working today, is good to very good, but nothing like blowing me away. Not I thought it was gonna, I thought it was gonna be something special. I'm gonna say that it is a 7.7. 7. Very good. Very good. What is it? <clears throat> Holy shit. Um, <clears throat> this is from Independent Joe. This is um, Woodford Reserve Baccarat. Yeah, you probably couldn't see that when I showed it earlier. It's the that $2,000 decanter. Wow, that is Woodford Baccarat. Um, holy shit. Uh, I forgot that that was even in there. I haven't picked up that one ounce Wednesday box in so long. I forget what's in there. That is... That's a nosing whiskey right there. That's you take your two thousand dollar decanter, you pour yourself a glass, and you nose it, and you nose it, and you nose it, and then you pour it back. You drink something else. It's very good, but like that's so expensive. By the way, Mister Independent Joe, thank you so much for that sample because that's freaking crazy. Baloney just popped open Dark Arts Whiskey House French Oak Finished Bourbon. It's dancing in my mouth hole. Let's have a Friday. Let's have a Friday. Um, what for double oak regular restore picks? Uh, I haven't had enough of it to make a determination on it. Um, Probably because I'm not a huge Double Oaked fan. I don't really love Double Oaked products, so it's kind of why I've strayed away from the Woodford Double Oaked. Richard Hansen? You son of a bee, really? What's your new ball in the back? Hit me up if you ever want to visit the best bowling ball company in the world. Richard Hansen, of course I want to visit. Like, nothing hits like a hammer. Uh, yeah. Kind of, a, kind of like what I th I've been... That's all I have is ham. I don't have a ton of bowling balls. I have um, a hammer, a purple hammer, urethane. I have um, a hammer hazmat, 14 pound hammer hazmat. And my wife has a Black Widow 2.0 hybrid. And then this one I just I had to get because it is it's just a cool ball. It's a. Um, it's one of the overseas hammer balls. It's the Black Widow Darkness that I will drill eventually. So you know what they say. It's never the bowler. It's always the ball or the approach or the lane, the oil pattern. So nothing here. But yeah, I would absolutely. Is I think, um, where's Hammer at? Is that in Michigan as well? Because I know Brunswick is in Michigan. We lived in Muskegon for so long almost a year in muskegon and that was before i got back into bowling and i wish i was in into bowling while we lived there because it's like that's where brunswick is at i think and you know a lot of stuff coming out of that area 
<clears throat> Beach Sand Bourbon. Nothing better than hang with Matt on a Friday. Cheers. Thank you for the super chat and totally agree. Nothing like hanging with me. Just kidding. Uh, Jake Howder, boiling shrimp and drinking whiskey. Mm. Shrimp. This reminds me of Forrest Gump. Whiskey Talk says, my wife poured me a flight with two bourbons and two ryes. The ryes were in between the bourbons, and I couldn't say they were ryes. That happens. That happens a lot. Um, nothing to hang your head about, you idiot. You idiot. Just kidding. Frank Cassano joined late. Cheers, y'all. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, freaking Frank. Um, I was drinking what it was blind. I didn't know what it was. Turned out to be Woodford Baccarat. Why does some smell or taste like rubber band? Uh, that's mostly from my experience, like single malts or scotch, you know, single malt scotches, things like that. It's just a characteristic of them. Band-aids, kind of. Jimmy C. Holy, yeah, that's incredible. That's crazy stuff. How's the weight loss journey going? Um, I would say that it was going great, and then we packed on a little bit. We packed a little bit back on, but it's always it's on the front of my mind. I'll get it back off before summer. I will for show. Sure. Cameron's in the house. What's up, dude? I fell asleep listening to your live stream last night. Put me right to sleep. Fucking terrible. <laughs> Cameron in my ear. Blah blah blah. Blah, 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 Mitchell's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't hear any of it. Woke up several hours later, and it was playing a different Cameron live stream in my ear. Right back to sleep. Just kidding. New balls everywhere. No, they're not everywhere. The key is Facebook Marketplace getting used ones. The darkness isn't used, but you can get... Uh, the used used balls that are drilled already. Facebook Marketplace for like 60 bucks, which is awesome. Um, yeah. I put H barrel because I saw Cam in the house. What is that? Oh, because of Mictors. Dylan, I don't know. I thought that they were supposed to do a Mictors ride last year, but apparently they did not. Beach Sand Bourbon, you live in Muskegon, I live in Muskegon, crazy. Yeah, my wife, we were, she was travel nursing. Um, we lived in Grand Haven for a bit, and then we, it was an Airbnb, and then we switched houses, and we lived in Muskegon. Is during, it was right before we moved to, was it before or after Connecticut? Wow, before, before Connecticut. So it was 2020, yeah, during the whole shit show is when we lived there. Um, she was travel nursing at the hospital there, right off the highway. I introduced your initial idiot video to my kids, and that was so backfired now. Whenever they call me an idiot, all I can do is laugh and love you. What's the idiot video? How's yeah, Joe? Keep it going. Keep it going. I was, what, two... I was, like, 340. Then I got down to, like, 220s. Now I'm back to 260. But I'll, it'll come back off. As long as I don't friggin', you know, fall all the way off the wagon. But for a while, I'm only going to be able to eat liquid. So that'll help. You know? Unless I'm just drinking, like, McDonald's flurries all day. Jeffrey Wack is in the hizzy. What's up, dude? Oh, thank you, Mike. Mike, you the man. Thank you. Uh, Dana Spearlinks up, Matt. A little OGD 114. Hells yeah. That's an underrated pour for sure. Wow, my throat and voice are just like slowly getting worse. <clears throat> All right. First thing I want to taste tonight. Let's start with this Westward Whiskey. This is the most recent one they sent. It is Vienna malt. Apparently, what happened was, so this was a gift from Westward Whiskey. Um, I always get, like, press releases from them when they're releasing something new, and this was their newest thing. Oh, that was a good one. 
America? Hey, the, <laughs> pressurized, huh? So, apparently they went, they received their shipment of barley and they didn't get the right shipment. They got the wrong type of malt. Um, they got Vienna malt instead of what they normally get. And instead of sending it back, they were like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. It is 90 proof. It is an exclusive release for the Westward Club. Explore further at westwardwhiskey.com. Distilled, matured, and bottled by Westward Whiskey, Portland, Oregon. Their bottles are super, super nice. Like, kind of dangerous shaped, but, you know, broad shoulders. Am I the biggest fan of single malt? No. Have I learned to appreciate it and enjoy it? Yeah. But still not, you know, still not my go-to stuff. It's a bit muted immediately, which is fine. Oh, by the way, um, at the end of the stream tonight, I am doing a giveaway, not based on Super Chats at all. Just I will ask a random trivia question. Will it be about whiskey? Will it be about the channel? Will it be about bowling? Will it be about friggin' what do you call it? Current events? I don't know. I don't know, but um, so trivia question towards the end of the stream. For this, it was a gift from Agent Or. It's an Agent and Or bottle flight set. Come on. Why doesn't Ah! Oh, dropping stuff. Is that better? Why doesn't I can't, nothing ever works the way I want it to work, ever. Anyway, it's this. It's a Barrel King bottle flight set, and there are three um, aged in ore, I'm sorry, aged in ore bottle flight set. They engraved with Barrel King for me, or however they did it, and the three sample bottles inside will be filled with something delicious, some things delicious. So that's what the winner will get tonight. Just a little, um, doing some thank you giveaways uh, as we lead up to my mouth surgery. So stick around. Don't leave. I know you want to. Um, wow. Very fruity. It smells like if you had a scratch and sniff Band-Aid. And it were like cherry Kool-Aid scratch and sniff Band-Aid. Not in a bad way, in a good way. The rubber band note that somebody mentioned earlier is now stuck in my head. It smells like a fruity rubber band. And I like that about it. For some reason, a drum set is in my mind. Oh, maybe because I said band. Uh, overall, though, it smells like something I want to drink. A little bit grapey, too. Trans it's like transitioning into a grape Kool-Aid. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I'm here. Or whatever the guy says when he breaks through the wall. <laughs> Hello. I'm back. No, that's not it. Hey, weak wall. Ah. All right, down the hatch westward, the animal. That is weird, in the best way. That tastes like hot cocoa, but it's not hot. My, um, my wife listens to, this just reminded me of this. It does taste like hot cocoa, but my wife listens to this, um, and by my wife, I mean, I also listen to it, but it's like one of those true crime shows, like murder mystery things on YouTube. And this chick, Annie Elise or something is her name. Tend to life, it's called. Matt, stop acting like you don't know. I know. Annie Elise, Tend to Life. <clears throat> One of her sponsors is this thing called Beam Sleep Tea, which my wife has always had problems sleeping, like 
through the night and shit and falling asleep, blah, blah, blah. Especially when she was working, you know, when she was traveling and stuff. So that was a big problem. So anyway, we gave this sleep tea a shot, which is extremely stupidly expensive. But we tried it, and it really works for my wife. If anyone out there needs, um, it's, I always try to, like, find the biggest discount code on the internet when I, when I reorder it for her. It's not cheap, but it actually helps. It's, like, all natural shit. I don't know. But anyway, the funny thing is, in this girl's ad read for the Beam Sleep Team, she's like, my favorite flavor is caramel sea salt. It tastes just like hot chocolate. And I just was like, hey, that's the worst. Like, she probably sold a shitload ton of it, but like, that's probably not what the company wants, is to hear that their flavor tastes like a different flavor. The caramel sea salt tastes just like hot chocolate. Eat my shorts. And that's not it either. Oh, yeah. I thought it was, oh, yeah. But then I thought that was more macho man. Oh, yeah. Tim Evans is here. What's up, dude? 1792 foolproof is pretty damn good. I posted. I was not happy today. Really not happy. What the hell are you talking about, Mom? Brandon. Oh, today's weight. Yeah. I did not weigh myself this morning. I should have. Yes, that was Randy Savage. That's what I thought. Tastes like human. How's Mama Porter doing since last week's surgery? Eric B. wants to know, Mom. How's it going? Wow, am I just like... My body temperature just increased by a 1,000. Back to the Vienna malt. That is so soft. It's weird. It's soft on the front of the palate, and then like a ski jump in the middle of the palate gets real steep and zing and zingy. Um, I think that the hot chocolate note is very, very good note, but like a bitter hot chocolate, like a bitter, like a dark hot chocolate. Yeah, almost like a baker's chocolate. I don't mind it. I think it's kind of good. I think it's pretty good. I will add it to my array of American single malts, and they'll just sit there on the counter. As a matter of fact, I owe Mr. Bubble Bath Bourbon some Westward single malt samples from the last year or so, or maybe longer. So I'll just add it to that. I'll add more to it. <clears throat> Not really my favorite whiskey on the planet, American single malts, but the Westward is the best I've had for sure. What's up, Derek? Chris Miller just cracked Remus Repeal 7. It's pretty good. Nice job, Ross and Squiggles. That's right. The 7? Seven, 7? Yeah, the 7 was last year's. Yeah, it was good. Where's my phone? There it is. All right. I have Ask Me Anything questions from Patreon that I want to get to, and we have, what, three more whiskeys to get to? No problem. No problemo. All right, Patreon questions. Uh, from Dr. Special Ed. Doc, that's got to be what that stands for. Do you think American single malt will continue to grow and become a significant part of American whiskey? Like its own section in the store? Uh, it'll grow, but I don't think it's going to like explode. I don't think that there are... I mean, here in Colorado, the, the Colorado whiskey section is basically an American single malt section, pretty close. But I don't, I don't know. I feel like the single malt category, as far as like whiskey is concerned, is covered pretty well from, you know, overseas. Yeah. I, It'll grow. It's not going to get enormous. I could be wrong, obviously. I think the average American whiskey consumer is more like, bring in Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, 
you know, America. Single malt just doesn't really scream America. It does say it, though, just not screams it. Speaking of Jack Daniels, next on the agenda is Jack Daniels Distillery Series Straight Tennessee Whiskey finished in Oloroso Sherry Casks. Agent and handcrafted white oak barrels then finished in Oloroso Sherry Casks, creating the perfect sip for the season. 90 proof. <clears throat> oh, it's, wow. Tennessee whiskey aged in charred American white oak barrels matured for three additional years in Oloroso Sherry Casks. All right. So three years. Interesting. Next question from Patreon. Uh, what From Adam McIntyre. What do you see as the next big trend in whiskey? Good and or bad. The next big trend in whiskey? It seems like there's always a new finishing barrel. Or always something like... Hmm... It's, it's got to be some sort of a finish or different. It's always like a different type of wood. You know, Amberana was a big thing for a bit, still kind of going strong. Um, it'll either be that or some sort of like expedited aging process that people are doing. I'm not sure what they could. I mean, like there's the staves and there's like the chips and stuff. I'm guessing it'll be something like that. Somebody will figure out how to do it better than it's been done, and then it'll catch on. That's my that's my thought on that. Ryan Alves, you mother effer, in the nicest way possible, enjoying some boulder cast strength mountain goat. <laughs> Let's run it back. Hells yeah. Um, I've been in talks with boulder to do another barrel pick. <clears throat> so hells yeah, we should definitely do that. Uh, Bob Glass, picking up my Batch 77 from Barrel King tomorrow. Hells yes. Thank you so much for the support, and thank you for being a Barrel King member. They love that. We love that, I guess I could say, considering I'm part of the friggin' team. Um, definitely in for another Mountain Goat. So great. Very, very underrated is the Boulder Cask Strength. Now let's go into, I think DC said he guessed that this was going to be raisiny. For three years in a Sherry Cask? Probably. Let's try it. Hmm. Let's warm it in my hand. Let's warm it in my paw. Continue to warm it for a minute. Chris Garner says, back in the day, cough button, hold on. Pardon me. Back in the day, Irish and Scottish immigrants wanted to make whiskey with barley, but it wasn't available, so they used corn. Yeah, smartest thing that they could have done. <laughs> um, big fan of the corn. Big fan of the corn. Weirdly enough, this smells, this has like a mineral, a bit of a... <clears throat> Put your pajamas on, she says to the kids. That's a good idea. It's pajama time. Uh, a bit of a mineral, a minerality to it. Kind of like rocks. Some hot rocks. But one thing I pick up on mostly all sherry finished whiskeys in general is some sulfur. And there's definitely that there. Some burnt match. Surprisingly, not a lot of raisin. Not a lot of fruit in general. Hmm. I smell pencil. I smell sulfur and rocks. If they were sweetened up a little bit, a little Splenda in there. Let's go for a taste.
Okay. Hold on. I need a, what do you call it? What am I going to call it? Um, America. A confidence pour. I don't know if my palate, because that literally, it was, the first thing I tasted was that Woodford Baccarat, which seemingly was very one note and didn't have a lot of flavor. Second thing I tasted was the Westward single malt, which was 90 proof, but it kind of came off the same way. The third thing is this Oloroso Sherry, and the nose wasn't really popping through, and then the palate was like pretty dead on there. So I'm trying, I want to taste something that I know what it tastes like to see if my palate, shit. Look at that. Oh, wrong size. Close enough. I don't want that. Which one do I want to try? What is my confidence pour? Oh, huh. This is a confidence pour. America. If I... If this doesn't hit me like a ton of peanuts, then you know that I am off tonight. Not great to review and talk about whiskey if you can't taste it properly. Know what I'm saying? All right. This should be a peanut bomb. No way. So, uh, this week, when I said that my youngest was sick, she kept, she was like, I kept trying to feed her stuff that she loves. Next gimmick, whiskey aged in space. Maybe. I kept trying to give her foods that I knew that she would eat because she wasn't, she didn't want to eat anything. She wasn't feeling well. Um, so I tried to give her like an uncrustable and she was like, it just doesn't taste the same. It just doesn't taste good. I tried to give her some Nutella, same thing. She's like, it just doesn't taste, it just doesn't taste as good when I'm sick. And then she got some like Valentine's Day candy and she was like, it's not good because it doesn't taste. I'm wondering. The feeling in my lungs is that of a feeling I've had before back in 2020 ish time time zone area had it twice yeah eric b i think that could be it <clears throat> the funny thing that's not funny but <clears throat> the weird thing is i don't know if this is that or not but the two times i've had that whiskey smelled terrible like it just smelled like completely rancid like disgusting uh if that is that this time then it's different because it just doesn't really have a like this bookers doesn't smell there's like this there's like a eight percent i'm doing a cameron here where i give percentages that make no sense because who the hell knows cameron is like oh this smells four percent more peanutty three three point four percent more nutty mm. I can now that I really smell it, I can I can smell the nuttiness to it, but it should be very ramped up. It's very light. It's taste of the bookers. Yeah, I'm missing a ton of my palate right now. That is a bummer. Mm. It's almost, it's like the front of my palate. The back of my palate's all like zingy and wood chippy and peanutty. But the front of my palate is like weak sauce, not working. You know, gotta wake it up. That's strange. 
We'll continue though, because I can't take the bookers. I can't. Eh, shit, I don't give a shit. We're just gonna continue to taste. How did they do at their bowling event last weekend? It wasn't. It was two weekends ago, and um, my so I have a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. Um, my eight-year-old bowled with her cousin on teams, and then she, they bowled singles also. Their team, she did, my eight-year-old bowled above her average. She did well, but their team didn't place very well. Uh, my six-year-old bowled with, uh, like, one of the local boys from here who's in her league. He's, like, the tiniest, cutest little kid. And she bowled over her average, and he bowled really well, so they got first place. They got first place for their division in um, uh, in doubles, so that was really, really cool. The funny thing is, my six-year-old who won doubles with her partner, she doesn't really care. She's like, nah. My eight-year-old, who's competitive and like really wants to win, she didn't, you know, she didn't place that well, which is funny. Two and a half teaspoons more nutty. Uh, last time around, everything was just muted. Yeah, that's 27% less palate. <laughs> uh, boxers or briefs? Boxer briefs, bro. Gotta go boxer briefs. First time I've ever seen someone slap their tongue. Listen, when you gotta wake something up, slap it around a bit. Nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> um... Let's see here. Any other questions here on Patreon? Barrel King question. What determines if a bottle is wax dipped or not? I have no idea. I'll have to ask Jared. Do I have an all-time favorite band or musician? Asks Christopher Miller. No. But... I mean, there's so much... Like, I, I'm not sure what it is, if it's part of my ADHD or something, but, like, questions like that are really difficult for me. Favorite movie, favorite band, favorite, like, it puts me in, like, a weird space where I have to think about it really hard. And I I already know that I've tried to answer it so many times. I don't. I would love to go see the Red Hot Chili Peppers in concert. I think that would be really cool. Um, so even though I don't listen to the Chili Peppers very often at all, I think that'd be a cool concert to go to. You know, just listen to their hits. They probably would even play their hits if I went. They'd probably play some fucking bullshit. Pardon my language. <clears throat> Let's see. Aaron L. would also be interested to hear about future picks. Are we getting another Russell's pick this year, please? Oh, so that's a follow-up to somebody else's question. Great question, Ryan Alves, if you're still in the chat. Matchbox 20 guy. I want to push you around. Well, I will. Well, I will. I want to push you down. Well, I will. As we just watched the Barbie movie the other night. I want to take you for granted. Uh, but anyway, um, Ryan did mention another, he mentioned possibly another Russell's pick this year. Let me see the original question about barrel picks. Oh, from Tone Pony, are you concerned that joining Barrel King will diminish the ADHD barrel picks? No, not at all. That was part of the conversation I had with um, Jared when I joined Barrel King was I can continue doing what I'm doing, which includes barrel picks. So no, nothing will change. Hopefully we have an awesome barrel pick year. But no, nothing nothing should be changed with that. The only thing that could change is just like sometimes you get lucky and get barrel picks. Sometimes you don't get lucky and don't get barrel picks. So it's it always varies, you know, by the year. Californication, yeah, real It's just a good song. <clears throat> Do you take meds for the ADHD? And if so, the med shortage hitting you like it's hitting me? Um, yes, and it has. I mean, there's been so many shortages through the years that it's like 
uh, it's always a thing. Like, there, there's always so much trouble with getting medication. I mean, it's just silly. Every single month, it's like, it's always something. So, yeah, I've switched medications before, been on different things. Like, but luckily, thankfully, I don't have, like, the personality or whatever that, um, like, I could go without it. Like, it, it sucks for, like, a week or so. Because, like, that stuff, you give it to some, to some people and, like, they're ultra, like, tch, tch, tch. Uh, for me, it basically just brings me to baseline. And um, if I don't have it, luckily, I'm not, like, fiending. I'm not like, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. So it's good um, in that regard. So if there is a shortage, it's not going to kill me. I'll be fine. Yeah, every... I think everyone's switching drugs. It's weird. Like, medication shortages are strange, but they're everywhere. I mean, ooh. Oh, best concert? I haven't been to very many. But I would say um, there's a couple Sugar A concerts I went to when I was in high school. Those are good. Favorite comedian? Uh,. Shane Gillis, probably, currently. It took you for more of a Sugar Ray guy. But it was high school days. And when we when you live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, you go to whatever concerts they supply, okay? There's, like, not many at all. Doing a barrel-proof blind in Stag 23C, isn't it somewhere? It'll probably be like, uh, you know, Stag 23C. We're going to pour that. Hell, let's, we're going to pour it. The Oloroso Sherry Jack Daniels is fine, I think. My palate says it's fine. It's lightly flavored tonight. Let's actually, before we get to the Stag, let's do this. This is the Old Louisville. Old Louisville. Schla. Justin's House of Bourbon, I think that... The likes, Dan and Julie helped Ryan with this. How do you open it? <clears throat> Stop with the sugar ray. <laughs> snowmobile in the UP. Uh, I didn't snowmobile. I ran a motel. My parents built a motel back in the 90s. We basically catered to snowmobiles. We catered to the, to the snowmobile crowd. But... Uh, I could count on one hand how many times I've been on a snowmobile myself. Oh, America, look at it. Steaming. Steaming. Uh, this is seven years, a seven year old old Louisville. This is my first old Louisville ever. <laughs> That's dark. Holy shit, that's dark. Um, Old Louisville, 116 proof, seven-year-old, straight bourbon whiskey, bottle number 69, nice of 90. Bourbon Outfitter, single barrel select. Commemorating the distinct style and the unique architecture in Old Louisville neighborhood, our single barrel offerings reflect this of its diverse mash bills, age, and profile bourbon. Um, distilled in Indiana, which is weird. It's old Louisville, but it comes from Indiana. All right. How's the Petoskey Stone collection? I haven't. I think the, the Petoskey Stones are all at my parents' house. Oh. Uh, okay, more Patreon questions. Um, do you have an all-time favorite band or musician? Christopher Miller asked. Answered that. Would be oh the Russells thing. Hopefully, another Russells pick. Ryan Alves. I'm gonna bug you about that again. Um, Corn Sipper, Torn Slippers asks. Do you believe in gosh? 
are there any ADHD barrel picks in the pipeline that you're particularly excited about? Do I believe in Gosh? The hell's Gosh? G L S H? I do say, oh my gosh. So I guess I must believe in Gosh. Um, so the next barrel pick is it's funny because some of my favorite barrel picks have been from Backbone Bourbon Company, Backbone Bourbon. And next month, the nine year straight bourbons coming out is going to be dropped. And that was my favorite one. It's going to be possibly, probably the last one in their straight uh, bourbon single barrels that I pick. Last year was the Slip and Jimmy. Um, the most recent one was Dude. And then this last one, Saul Gone, is going to be probably the last one that I do that's a straight bourbon from them that's that old. And I think it's really, I'm excited about that one to see what that tastes like when it's bottled next month. Because it was fantastic when we tried it there. <clears throat> when are you getting to Missouri, asks Steve Cond, Cond. Will it be a public event or will you be ushered in and out like Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl? Summertime. I'll be in Missouri in the summertime. Exactly when, I'm not sure, but it's got to be public. We got to do a meet up there at Bayo King for sure. I'd have it no other way. This smells very double barreled. A very double barreled product. My wife texted me and said, Watch for bones when you eat, please. I got a sharp one. She made homemade chicken noodle soup. She's the best. But apparently, there's a bone or two in the mix. Yeah, Missouri this summer. Um, we'll know more later. Nick S. asks, what is the last bottle you didn't have high expectations for but really surprised you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the What did I just review? Well, there were a couple of ryes. The old Ezra 7 rye was really, really good. I liked that a lot. And then the Knob Creek Seven Year Eye, I really enjoyed, even though it was like it's their basic um, 100 proof Knob Creek Rye. Really damn good. I didn't expect to love it all that much, but I thought it was really good. Other than that, there's got to be more. Uh, Oh, 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 the um, 13th century, the 13th century hazmat rye. I was very skeptical about that because it was like 140 proof, but it was aged in small barrels in Colorado. And I was like, this is going to be bad. Turns out fantastic. That I think that's probably my top pick for surprise. 13th century barrel strength rye whiskey. Hmm. Joe, I did not try the Jefferson's Tropics yet. I've heard good things about it, and I passed one up last week. I might go get one. I might go get one. Where in the UP? Elger County. Born and raised in Elger County. I feel like you may have been to Crazy Town back in the day. Crazy Town. Crazy Town. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. You're my sugar fly. Is that, the, is, that, is that crazy town? I don't know. As an everyday Jack Daniel for mixers and all, would you go with Jack Daniel's bottled and bond or single? Both of them are fine. Um, oh, the single barrel barrel proof for mixers and everything? Oh, boy. The, I think those are two. What, if I make my wife uh, whiskey and drink, I use Jack Daniels Bottled and Bond, or Jack Daniels Bonded. But Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof is friggin' ridiculous. Like, so good. Having a little Woodyville right now? Love it. Nice. Escan oh, Escanaba. Just driving down Ludington Street. 
this old Louisville is at first I thought it smelled very double oaked, which I believe is the case. I actually think it is double oaked, but the more it sits in the glass that, um, what do I call it? It's like the lumber yard wood kind of vanishes and the, the lacquer or like the wood, you know, um, the varnish smell that I get is gone and it smells, well, it's not gone, but it smells like a deeper, thicker version of that. It doesn't smell so astringent and bright. It's a darker, deeper version of that. Um, almost like, a. this reminds me of the Jack Daniels double barreled, their stuff it reminds me of that, like their heritage barrel stuff. All right, let's go for a taste. Yeah. It's weird. I'm so used to tasting things. Obviously. Who's not? Oh my gosh. Shut up, Matt. I'm so used to tasting things. It's the dumbest shit I've ever said. Let me let me finish my thought so you know how ridiculous this was gonna get. I'm I'm so used to tasting things that I'm realizing that part of my palate isn't working from the sickness. Duh. Everybody tastes shit every day, Matt. They get it. The back, the only shit that's working is the back of my tongue. It's, that's really good for like, but I can tell that it's, there's something missing taste-wise that I'm not getting. And it's like literally the front half of my tongue is like completely muted. That's so weird. I'm starting to think that this guy is used to tasting things. Eric B., you freaking nailed it. Oh my gosh, so dumb. I'm sorry. Oh, good, David. I'm glad you liked it. That's good. The Heritage Barrel Rye. The double-barreled one? Like the, the toasted barrel or the double-barreled? Is that the one? Oh, yeah, Flex Luther. Also, pretty used to eating and tasting. Yeah, it's eating and drinking, yep. Something being held back. What's that? Yeah, it's not fun. I can just, I, I, I it's a bummer because the funny thing was I wanted to taste the Stag 23C because I feel like it just doesn't live up to what I remembered Stag being when I tasted it. So tonight it's going to be even worse. But that's ain't gonna stop me. Ain't gonna stop me. Just a little bit. Save the rest for, uh, you know, when I can actually taste properly. That sucks. Should have known. Where's a rocker distillery at? Rocker distillery? It's been one week since you looked at me. Sitting around and I'm sorry. Something. It's a good song. What happened to McCurry for you or something? <laughs> mm -mm. Let's review the archives. We have determined this is, in fact, not the dumbest shit he's ever said. Jason Mounts, that's probably so accurate. That's very accurate. That's definitely not the dumbest shit I've ever said. But, um, Littleton, Colorado, okay. 23C is hot trash, says Saucy Shane. Remember, fastball can't see the road that you're taking is paved in gold. That's got to be another song. Uh, M10 Rye first, 1924 second. Four Roses, Barrel Strength third, Knob 12 fourth. I'm guessing that's your flight tonight. Interesting. 1924 is good. Mixture 10 Rye, very good. They're all good. Pueblo, Colorado, the most dangerous city in Colorado. 
apparently. That ain't, no, that's that. When's, what is that smell? Holy shit, I just went completely, oh boy. Nostalgic. My my palate and nose are so screwed up that this stag smells like um, Raisin Bran Crunch. And something else. Oh, boy. Big League Chew or something? What is that? That is so strange. Have you ever done that where you smell something and you're like, oh, my gosh, that smells like something from a long time ago that you haven't smelled in a long time? I think that's what nostalgic means. Shoot. I don't want to keep smelling it because it's going to go away. What is that? Immediately smell it. Yeah, Jam's Barger, that is very accurate. Which is common for a lot of Buffalo Trace products in general. It's like uh, one or two notes and then gone. A little bit of a bitter back end and then it's gone. Where did I score the stag? I scored it in Grand Junction, Colorado for $189, which was a lot. Marcy's Playground. I smell sex in candy, yeah. Who's that mountain? Me, Something like that? Yeah. Do your Trump impersonation? I've been doing it the whole time. Oh, Amy, it's taken care of. It's done. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. Um, so Jared and Rachel sold a barrel of whiskey through the Bourbon Junkies Patreon that covered the majority of it. Um, and then Bill Kavanaugh started a GoFundMe that took care of the rest, which is fucking crazy. Pardon my language again. So, yeah. Um, I... So my, my surgeries are, they don't schedule your surgeries until you pay for them. So I got the payout that Jared and Rachel sent me the money, which is nuts. I don't know what to do with that kind of, like I had no idea. Like I've never had that much money in my bank account. So I was like scared. Then when the, the GoFundMe money came and I was like, oh boy. What are, like, so luckily my dentist took um, a wire transfer and I got my two surgeries scheduled March 6th for my first surgery, which I believe is just going to be the top half of my mouth they might take out all my teeth but usually i guess they just take out the top half but when i first met with the surgeon he mentioned that he wanted to get all of my teeth out as fast as possible because of the infection that was like in my sinuses and shit so um first surgery march 6th second surgery april 22nd and then should be good from like should hopefully hopefully everything is you know good that's all i can say it's just a, such a crazy thing i've been trying to ignore the fact that it's happening so i don't stay up all night worried but it's happening sooner soon super soon thanks to all of you and i will be a much more confident smiley much more healthy matt and i will repay it to you in all the ways i can Have you had any of the Found North bottlings? If so, thoughts? Yeah, um, I have this one back here, which was a gift from Bill Kavanaugh. It's a, the Batch 4, which I haven't had a lot of, but it's really, really good. And I've had different samples as well. But they don't sell it here in Colorado. I've never seen a bottle for sale. But I'm open to it. Like, all their stuff that I've had has been really, really, really freaking good. 22A, I think I've had a sample of 22A and 22B. I think I've had samples of them. Okay, that, that note that I was thinking of before is gone. Yeah. Yeah, my, my senses are fried. Which is a bar. Um, 
knowing that that's Stag Jr., it tastes like Stag, which is good. I can admit that. Knowing that the Booker's was Booker's, tastes like Booker's. Knowing the Stag is Stag, tastes like Stag. But as far as nuances go and, like, details, we're not getting there tonight. Which is a bummer. So let's just answer more questions because that ain't working, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you so much. April 29th, 1992. What year was that? Or what happened on that day? Virtual insanity. That is Jamiroquois. Right? Amy Bohm, well then, just because you and the Whiskey family are so amazing. Cheers. Thank you, Amy. Amy, you're the best. Uh, let's see. Any... Uh, I always get my step count for my kids while we do this. They're always funny. You can tell when they don't wear their watch or when they're homesick. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there might be some good ones here coming up. Mashed Matter asks, if you could drink bourbon anywhere in the world with anyone in the world, where would you and with who? Great question. And at this, so at this very second, if I could snap my fingers and be anywhere with anybody, it would be somewhere that houses 300 people and it'd be with you guys. Like, I would, like, we're just, we're doing this right now. I'd love to be wherever you're at all together right now somewhere. Where would it be? Oh boy. Where would be a fun place to do? If we were all someplace, 300 of us, since this is all make-believe, 300 of us, right this second, we could be, where is a good place? Oh, man. Um, somewhere cool. Don't screw this up, Matt. Don't screw it up. Somewhere, somewhere like not not like a, a, a convention hall or anything that's like indoor. Somewhere outdoor. You know what? How about we are on a friggin' the podcast I actually did this once. They did the pod cruise um, where they had people on a cruise. Like somewhere like, like, like let's do that. Let's be on like a, on the water somewhere. Hells yeah. Our own mega yacht. A gigantic mega yacht. We borrowed it from Elon Musk. All 300 of us. Boom. New Orleans. That sounds like trouble. That sounds like trouble. Boat. Hell's yeah. Catalina Wine Mixer. Yup. Um, so did you ever envision that you would be here right now after winning the world's best whiskey tatter? <laughs> uh, I think that, I mean, when, if I won that or not, I don't think that that would have mattered. I think that it was an awesome achievement and something that I kind of hang my hat on that I achieved something I set my mind out to do. It was a super cool experience. And I mean, it's like a title. I'd be dumb not to use it, right? It's like, I won that, which is fucking amazing. Part of my language again. But uh, I don't think, based off of the community and all the support I had going into that, like, if that if I did not win that, I still think I'd be in the same space I am now, same place I am now. But uh, it was definitely like a major a boost of confidence, you could say. Heck yeah, whiskey cruise like Jefferson's Ocean, but good. <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. On an island somewhere. If we think about it, we're all just on a gigantic island anyway. Are you watching or binging any good TV shows right now? Oh, boy. Uh, that That's from Mashed Matter as well. Um, I 
Not right now. We just so like the that writer strike or whatever um kind of put the kibosh on a lot of shows, I think. But we just my wife like I really realistically watch whatever she watches, but um together we just watched Tacoma FD. Um I think it's on Netflix right now, but fantastic show. So Super Trooper Guys, Broken Lizard Crew, Tacoma FD we just watched. Oh uh, boy, what else? Young Sheldon was really good. Then from that, of course, we had to go watch The Big Bang Theory, which we never really watched before that. So there's those shows, but um, what the hell else? We're kind of just like waiting for other shows to come back on. But hopefully the writer's strike stuff ends soon. If it's not already, I'm not sure. Did I already talk about the bowling ball behind me? Oh, so listen, the bowling stuff, I love bowling. So it's like, I got the bowling sign. I got... My kids got a 3D printer, like a toy printer for Christmas. And I've just been printing like bowling pins because they're not really into it. So bowling pins. Shit. <sighs> I left the 27810. It's my bad. With the whole ADHD thing, there's always stuff that I'm into other than whiskey. And I kind of, like, want to, while I'm into shit, like, be into it, you know? Will I be into bowling a year from now? I don't know. But this one is uh, Black Widow Darkness. Oh, it's an overseas release bowling ball that... So I guess, like, I don't know the whole story about overseas bowling balls, but apparently, like, they don't like the same things that are made in the States. So... I actually don't know a lot about the core. It's probably, I mean, it's got the um, the same core as in all of the other Black Widows, but oh yeah, this is the darkness. This is badass looking. It looks so much better in person, you know, but but I've got enough bowling balls now. I've got a, I've got a few bowling balls that if I can't bowl, you know, consistently with a few, then I think I got a problem. That's not the ball, it's the bowler. I just like to decorate my set with shit that I'm into. That's all. You want me to throw, a, I'm not throwing a spare at that. Yeah, the two seven eight ten. That's not a very, that's not a very easy leave, huh? <sighs> Tonight we bowl. Pete Weber would never. Pete Weber retired yesterday from the PBA tour. Just I watched that. Nice balls, thanks, Jared. Renfro. The bowling rabbit hole. It's fun because it's um, something we do as a family. We can just do it, like. My wife enjoys it. So Krista loves, like, she's, I love bowling with all my, with, with everyone because everyone's like a different, has a different attitude towards it. Um, my eight-year-old's like, I want to do really well, but I'm not going to listen to any instructions. Like, I'm going to do it my way. And if I suck, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to throw a fit and I don't give a shit, but I'm mad and I want to be good. But I don't, I'm not, no, a, a pro, a pro, I'm not going to count my steps, not for nothing. My six-year-old, she's like, I don't give a shit about bowling, but we're going bowling, and I guess I'll enjoy it. And she sticks to her three-step approach and just, like, the same thing every time, and she's getting much better. Carissa is basically addicted to bowling like I am now, and it's just funny to watch her bowl because it's like some days she does really good, some days really bad. But at least one time while we're bowling, she's like, I hate this. We're never bowling again. Then like she'll throw a strike and then she's like, I love this shit. It's just it's it's a ton of fun. I hope that bowling makes a bigger like a big comeback. Sounds like every adult bowler I know. Do you let the kids win? Oh, we don't 
We don't bowl against each other. Just bowl, you know, have a little family outing. <clears throat> More Patreon questions. What's your strategy when working on a new blend? Um, I guess it depends on if I know what I have or not. Jared has this thing where he likes to send me a bunch of samples uh, in the past anyway that with like no labels on them or anything. Like I don't, like, this says like what barrel they came from, like a barrel number, but not what's in it. So I try to produce, so I guess it depends on how many, how big of a batch I need to make, like how big of a, you know, how many bottles I need to make. But I really like to, I taste through barrels and I find, I find barrels that I really enjoy. Um, and then I have to look at like how much of that liquid is available. And then I'll try different ratios of them. I try to build a good base out of what is available, like a lot of what's available, right? Um, try to find the best things that are, and not necessarily, and sometimes when you put things together that the best barrels together, it turns out like shit, which is weird. So you just have to find the right barrels to go together to make a good base. And then like, you just use other barrels to tweak it, to make it special or make it different. Or like, you can't, I've noticed, I mean, you can't be like, oh, it's missing, it's missing um, a sweet cherry note. Like, I really wish I had a sweet cherry note. So you find a, a barrel that has a sweet cherry note, and you put that in, it never works out. It's a, it never adds a sweet cherry note. It's always like, it just changes it. So it, there's really not a science behind it. It's like, really depending on your palate, your confidence, and then realizing when enough is good enough and not trying to overdo things or like add too much or like get too crazy. I don't know. It's, it's fun though. It's a ton of fun. I love it. And, um, I can't wait for you guys to taste more stuff that I'm, I work with cough button. I think I just mumbled on for like forever about nothing. But it's the truth. It's like you need to build a base and then add to it. That's kind of the way I look at it. Everything can't be well around T107. That's right. Ron, happy Valentine's Day to you too, Ron. Do, 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 do. I also 3D printed hearts for my kids' Valentine's Day boxes. Dan Dennis says, my hobbies are whiskey, bowling, and fishing. Want an older brother? Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? Like, oh, let's go bowling. Let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. Let's go bowling. Be the best. Cam is still in the stream, but he fell asleep an hour ago. I'm joking about Cameron's streams. Um, I, I love Cameron's streams. He's he's so eloquent. <laughs> Is that even the right word? He he's he has a very easy to listen to voice. He's very smart. He thinks he says things that I would love to say, but I can't think of the words. Um, I never miss a Cameron live stream, but I did fall asleep to listening to it last night. That's not a joke. Was it because? Um, he bored me to death. No, it's because I took like a dose and a half of NyQuil and I was exhausted from whatever the hell I got going on in my system. <clears throat> Shauna Marie D asks, if you could be a fictional character, who would you be? Oh, I would be, I would, I've already, he's already made up. He is, his name is Gravity Tractor. That's my wrestling name. It's my bowling name. He's just, he's a guy who could deflect asteroids with gravitation, with gravity itself, um, save the world, you know? Uh, gravity Tractor. That is my alter ego. Bob, it's, it's, I think about it every day. I think about that every single day. How can I make that happen? I would love it. I'd love to do that. Ever catch a fish with a bowling ball? 
No, I haven't, I haven't gone fishing since I've been into bowling, which is weird. Uh, whiskey business. I am new to the hobby, and I'm glad there are people like you out there. It makes everything feel more approachable. Oh, man. Um, thanks for saying that. I don't see it. Like, it's got to be that way, right? You can't sit around and, like, I don't know. You don't want to. should. I mean, that's the way it should be. So thank you for saying that. I hope that that's how it feels because that's the way I'd like it to be. That's the way it should be in general. Um, you know, it's it's not a one. It's not like a. I don't know. It's meant for sharing. It's. I don't know. I'll shut up about that. I, but yes, I I agree, and thank you for saying that. Anyway. <clears throat> Not sure if anyone tried it, but for some reason I'm really enjoying Puncher's Chance right now. That's Bruce Buffer's bourbon. That's right. It is a great place. All right. Anything else on here? What are some hints to a crazy blend you want to do being chief tasting officer? I heard Jared has not said no, so what is a glimpse into what maybe asks Eric Baldwin? Oh, that was... um. There were different barrel. There were barrels from different distilleries that I was asking Jared about because, and distillate from different distilleries. I, I'd like to blend different distillate and different, use different uh, used barrels to try to recreate something I really enjoyed in the past. Even and I know it's not going to recreate it perfectly, but it's kind of like knowing what flavors go together and what profiles fit together. I'd like to put something together that I've tasted before to see if I can recreate something special that I thought was special from somewhere else. Um, just using different distillate from Kentucky places and different used barrels. And then one last one. Not sure how close you are to the Denver area. Oh, I'm like four hours from there. I'm way over on the Western Slope. The Western Slope, eh? See, refresh. Uh, Corn Sipper Torn Slippers asks Elijah Craig A122, B523, don't like that one, and A124 at a store near me. A122, right? Um, yeah, yeah. B523 and A124. Our A124 is the furthest thing from Elijah Craig Barrel Proof that I've tasted. That's Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. B523, I didn't necessarily like all that much. Um, A122, I think, yeah, that's definitely, if you had to pick one between those three, for sure. A122, you're right. Baloney Phone Seca, you drop random NBA player names in your reviews that make me laugh. What sports teams do you root for? I don't really. Um, I used to be, so where I grew up was like so far away from professional sports teams. The nearest professional sports team from where I lived was the Green Bay Packers. So I lived in the UP of Michigan, Upper Peninsula. And so the Green Bay Packers were like three hours, four hours away. Four hours away, three hours away. I don't remember. Three to four hours from us. And then, so like there were, there were, so many other professional sports teams closer to us than the Michigan teams. It was really weird. There's no professional sports teams that were local. They're all so far away. Uh, so growing up, I'd watch sports, but I wasn't like in love with my local team or anything. So <clears throat> I kind of like followed athletes instead of teams. So I, I watched a lot of Ken Griffey Jr. when I was a kid. So uh, I just followed Griffey. So I watched the Seattle Mariners. Then I'd watch the Cincinnati Reds. When I lived in Chicago for a few years, I'd go watch. I'd go to a Cubs game to watch Griffey play when he was playing for the Reds. And then for a short stint, he played for the White Sox. And I went to like White Sox games to watch Griffey play and like when he was old and shit for the White Sox. Um, I was a big Kobe Bryant fan, so I'd like 
follow the Lakers for the longest time. But when he, you know, when he retired, I didn't really have any reason to follow the Lakers anymore. You know, uh, other than that, I mean, realistically, I just watch bowling now. I watch the PBA tour, the the men's and the women's PBA tour. Hell's yeah, let's freaking do it. That's where I'm at right now. Bowling on TV is fun. Stag 23C, I did, but my palate is off tonight, um, Brendan. But I'm like, uh, I don't know what I have going on. My kid's been sick, and now I'm sick, and I'm not, like, tasting things very well tonight. So it tastes like a Buffalo Trace product, but I kind of gave up on giving details of tasting because it's just not – I can tell that's the old Louisville. Nope, that's old Louisville. The hell is this then? That's a stack. What else did I put in a? Oh, was it Booker's? In no, I don't know what the hell my problem is. Yeah, the twenty-three C is good, but it's not like. From what I remember tasting it before, it's not like a crazy amazing. Like, it's just like in a tier way, way below like the top bourbons out there. It's just, it's good. It's really good. Even when you're sick, it's just very good. Just very good. Western Slope was a UP accent. Actually, edited out. <clears throat> wow, my voice is going quickly. I edited out a part of the video the other day where I was like, I said something in the video the 1924 video and it had a major UP like Finlander, a boot or something. And I was like, I went into it for a minute behind the scenes stuff, but I edited it out because I didn't know how many people would understand it, but uh, yeah. Kingpin. Yeah. We should do a meetup in friggin Reno, the big place in Reno. Eric watched, grew up watching Griffey in Seattle. The kid, Junior, loved it. Saw Griffey hit a home run in Colorado that may still be orbiting the planet. Man, that swing, right? So, like, when I was a kid, it's like trying to... So I threw right and batted left. Not because of Griffey, just it was a coincidence. When I was playing t-ball, my dad asked me, he's like, does this feel better or does this feel better? And I was a kid, I had no idea. I was like, uh, this? So I just batted left-handed my whole life. So as a lefty, as you grow up watching sports, it's like trying to imitate and duplicate like his Griffey's stance and stuff. It's so funny. It's such kid stuff. Mm -mm. What's the place is worse? Oh, the UP for sure. The UP is like, man, the UP is, you, yikes. Terrible hours and hours of driving. You, like you have to go to Green Bay to find um, good bourbon. Actually, that's not true. Aurora, the border of Wisconsin and the UP, has some good places, but yeah. Favorite bowler? Yours is EJ Tackett. Um, I like watching Tom Doherty bowl because he's a no thumb bowler like I am. And that's, it's fun to watch him. Plus he walks like Frankenstein. He's like, the best thing about bowling is everybody has their own shit. Everyone does their own quirky, weird thing. And Tom Doherty's like, Oh, Frankenstein. And then he's like, no thumb bowl. I like Tom Doherty a lot. Um, Tackett is fun to watch. He throws a spare ball so hard that he, I mean, he's amazing too. Um, I like watching Sterner quite a bit. And uh, I mean, they're, they're all, it's all fun. It's because it's like, it's just a bunch of dudes who like, they all do better in some, some situations. And I don't know. I'd say Doherty's my favorite to watch for sure. And I mean, Belmo was great to watch. It's like the original two-hander. Kyle Troop is fun to watch because he's basically like an off-duty clown and it's fun to watch. Yep, Kyle Troop is 
a very interesting dude. He found some great bottles in Marquette. I would love to hear the story behind that. There are two stores in Marquette. There's Blue Link Party Store and there's White's Party Store on 3rd Street. Um, back in like 20, 2018, you could find some good stuff in Marquette. Like if you just drove around to find all the little stores and like buy them out of stuff. But um, no, the Blue, Blue Link, it's just, oh, I can't even can't even but the good thing about um michigan grocery stores sell liquor so you can go into like a econo foods or super one foods and they all have bruce could find could find btac in the up uh no no <clears throat> what was this oh bowlers yeah it's just they're all fun like what you grew up watching pete weber i would imagine yeah P. Weber, who do you think you are? I am P. Weber. It's so much. It's all fun. Bowling is great. It's all full of personalities and just, yeah. Um, Malat, very good. Malat, he's Malat always like comes in. He's like this huge dude. And he's like, I bowled really well, but my back hurts. And now I'm going to, now we're not bowling anymore. Like, like uh, Wes Malat. By the way, this Sunday, like noon, PBA on FS1 or FS2. It's the Pete Weber Classic. The TV show, the finals. Uh, I think that's it for the Patreon questions. Pretty sure. I think I got to all of them. Best cartoon villain, Megatron. The Chatham Co-op even has liquor. Yeah, they do. Best cartoon villain, I don't know. Scrooge McDuck. Would love to have a bourbon with Weber. <sighs> yeah, he. He's a character, that guy. He's a big time character. Blue Link had a huge selection of bourbon back in August. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I Was I there in August? When was I back? When was I in Michigan last? I went to Kentucky for the Russell's pick and then went up to Michigan. I mean, the, they have the best selection, but it's like... It's not like a place you go to every week and it's like, oh, they got new stuff. It's like they have what they have. And if you go back next August, then they have different stuff. But that's it. <clears throat> but yeah, Mar the UP is terrible for bourbon. The worst. Bowling without any holes in the ball? No, two holes in the ball. Uh, just no thumb. Let's see. End of July, first part of August, yeah. West Mall had one hell of a rev rate back in the day. They, I mean, oh, uh, I also like watching Packy, Hammerhand, Hammerhand. He, uh, and um, oh, who's the, the lefty from, so, so Packy has like a 600 rev rate and like super sharp two hand lefty, but like there's another dude from reminds me of Packy a lot. I can't remember his name. But yeah, like those those lefties throw the ball or those two handers have such a high rev rate. I got a really high rev rate. I think I would I got to go to a, a bowling center that has the um, specto or whatever that like tells you. I, I probably think it's higher than it is. But being a no thumb bowler, I really overbought on balls that don't need to I bought balls that help hook when I don't need that for the bowling centers around here with no oil on lanes. Um, I'm hesitant to pull the trigger on blue run. I'm super mad. I missed your barrel pick, but it was late to the party. Where would I start with blue run? Um, 
Uh, yeah, Jesper Svensson is the one. Jesper. Yep. That's the guy. So, with the Blue Run stuff, I mean, really, if you want, if you really want to get into it, I would honestly start with pours at a bar if you can find a bar that has them. Uh, they're a hundred bucks a bottle, give or take, and it's hard to really recommend something that you may or may not love at hundred bucks a bottle. So, I would say I would start with either getting samples from somebody, going to a bar that has Blue Run, um, tasting it without buying it first to find out what you like and what you don't. Their golden rye is good. I like that. Uh, but yeah, they're just, yeah, that's the one. The, the emerald rye. Is a golden rye and emerald rye different? It's got to be. Mm -mm. Where do you like your feet up and what arrow do you aim at? This is so niche and I love it. Um, so I start with my, so I don't know, actually, so listening to people who bowl, they always say like, they're on this, they're on, um, they're here, they're there, like what board they're on, but I never know like what they're talking about, what foot I start with my right foot on like 27 normally. And usually every time I have to move left, no matter what ball I'm throwing, unless I get some, I start with on 27 because my purple hammer, the urethane purple hammer, if the lanes are oiled well enough, I can throw it at um, the, I usually go between the middle and second, or the second and middle arrow, or the second arrow, and from there. Uh, but typically I end up moving left with everything else because I have to, because most of my strikes are Brooklyn strikes because my local bowling alley, I'm guessing only oils their lanes once a week. Kevin Williams, he's part of the house bowling peeps, I think house bowling on YouTube. <clears throat> 228, 230 people still in here listening to bowling talk. Golden rye is good too, but emeralds is better. Okay. Start with your slide foot. That's what ends up on the lane when you throw it. Okay. So that I means that makes sense. But when you say start with your slide foot, I take my first step with my slide foot. I do a five step approach, first step with my left foot, which is my slide foot. But I guess like, um, I just pay attention to where my right foot is at, which for some reason, I don't know. So no matter what, my left foot would still be in the same place. So wherever, if I start on the 27 with my left foot, that means I probably started like the 32 with my left foot, I would imagine. Slide with the opposite foot. Yeah, I know that, obviously. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, if, I actually have to ask them. 39 boards on a lane, yeah. So 27 is where my right, I always, see, I didn't, I never learned like exactly, I'm learning as I go. But yeah, my right big toe, start on the 27. You have reflections and you wish I had that money back. Yeah, that's why I don't, if I really fell in love with one of the blue run bottles, I would say that. But like, I know that some people are going to like them and some people aren't. So it's hard to really say, oh, go buy this or go buy that. Um, you know, it's I never want to give suggestions for people to go buy something if I don't love it enough to say that. <clears throat> Hit Hunter, I have no hope of grabbing a Stag Junior bottle or CN23. Any recommendations of in either to make myself feel better? What? Apologies if I've already asked. Just join the chat. Um, to make my soup feel better. Make yourself. If you can't get a C923 or Stag Jr. Shoot. I don't know. Um, 1792 foolproof single barrels. If you can find one of those, maybe, would be a really good thing. Um, 
you know, that's in the same price range. 1792 full proof. I would say Old Forester 1920, have you had that? I know it's a little bit different, but still kind of there. Just like, I know what you mean. It's hard to, wherever you live or wherever you're located, Stag Jr. or Elijah Craig just may not be available at all. Rare Breed is always the answer. Yes and no at the same time. Rare Breed is good, but Rare Breed leans more towards the Elijah Craig profile than the um, Stag Jr. profile. I would say that, you know, the Old Forester 1920 or a 1792 foolproof would be more of a sweeter and also sometimes a little bit nutty varietal of bourbon that kind of meet in the middle there. Something from Nashville Barrel Company. Yep, those are really good too. A little bit more expensive, but definitely right there with it. <clears throat> Why does Seth Neil 7 have to cost 50 bucks? How many fingers am I holding up? Three fingers and Heaven Hill 7 at 50 bucks? Why does it seem like it's more expensive elsewhere? I think I don't see it for 50 bucks here. I think it's like 70, 69, 65, 70 bucks. I'm always afraid my fingers would be stuck in the holes of the balls. Yeah, each arrow is five boards. Yep. So 27 is seven boards past the middle board to the left. You should line, do a bruiser level stunt, line up whiskey bottles as pins and mow them down with a bowling ball. That's what the, um, what do you call it, the damn elf that comes for Christmas time? The elf on the shelf did that. The elf on the shelf lined up a bunch of whiskey bottles and threw my bowling ball at them. Yeah, Daniel lines up with her right foot. I mean, I don't think it really matters, like, I guess, I don't know. So if I'm if I'm moving left, like I I count the boards with my left foot or my right foot, which I, in my mind doesn't wouldn't if I did it with my left foot, it would be the same. I just see where my left foot is at. Bruce, what's up, dude? Friggin' TJ, what's happening, man? Saw that you saw some really expensive whiskey in California. Was that like thirteen hundred dollars for an old Fitz ten year? You should have told that store owner no. You are no. That was crazy stuff. Thirteen hundred dollars for Old Fitz ten year. You could have bought thirteen Rebel ten years that were that are better and been like, oh look at me with thirteen times more liquid. Yeah, Bruce, we're talking about bowling. I knocked down some of my pins already. It's just been a good time. It's been a good time. Uh, what else? Oh, I gotta do the giveaway thing. Shoot. Almost forgot. Um, Agent Or bottle flight set has Barrel King on it. Thanks to Agent Or for sending this. Oh, it's got. I thought I had three. Why am I dumb? Has four sample bottles inside. The winner will receive four um, filled sample bottles. They'll be filled with very good things. So this will just be based off of total luck. If you're a patron, you kind of know where to start if you've went back and if you've looked at that in the past couple months. But all right, the first person to guess my best bowling game, one game bowling score wins. So it's totally up to chance. If you can guess my best bowling score, first person to say the number wins. Aaron Pierce, no. Zach, nope. Nope. Dylan, nope. See, nope. Nope. He's, oh, we're getting. Ooh. Yeah, well, ooh, Paul, nope. Slavland, nope. We're looking. We're looking. This might. Um, let's see here. Can we pass? My mom says 230. She's off. Some of them are really close. Obviously, oh, Dana's very close. Very close for Dana. Um, oh, oh my gosh. If all the numbers are coming except for the right one. All the numbers are coming except for the right one. 
cough button. Not a 300 brusel. That would be nice. Come on. No, no. Up, 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 up. Pink Dan, no. Boom. Stuff and things. P&W, 221 is my best game, 221. I have gotten so close to, I've bowled better games than the 221, but I've just like missed spares or not strung my strikes together in the proper way to score higher than that. But 221 is my best score so far. So stuff and things. PNW, send me an email, ADHDWhiskey at gmail.com with your address, and I will get that out to you. I will fill those with things, I will label them, and I will send that to you. So send me that email. I'll get that to you. Next week, I'm going to do another giveaway. It's going to be a little bit bigger next week. Next week will be a bigger giveaway, and then on the 1st, the 1st of March will be my last live stream before my surgery, so it will be the biggest giveaway. So we started with the um, Barrel King Asian Ore uh, bottle flight set filled with allocated goodness, and then, um, you're killing me, uh, next week will be bigger, and then there will be a, the biggest on the 1st. Best series? Let's not talk about that, all right? It's not a 600 yet. I have not bowled a 600 series yet. Pretty close to a 600 series, but not a 600 series. I always bowl, after I bowl a good game, like after a 221, I'm so like amped from, like my 221 game will be like me shitting the bed in the ninth frame, like having an open ninth. And then, like, strike four, three, like, or like, uh, open ninth, and then, like, I'll throw a gutter ball or something, and then, you know, strike, strike. It's always like something stupid to keep me from scoring really high, uh, or really high for me, anyway. And then the second game after I bowl a really good game, it's like I have a, a adrenaline dump and just, Bowl very poorly. Uh, Hit Hunter, thanks. Enjoy all about your show, by the way. Also had effed up teeth, and it's a nice thing to be ashamed of. My dad is dentist, sister's hygienist, and brother, an orthodontist. I am the black sheep and proud. Oh, man, it's got to be rough. <clears throat> Few 290s, oof. Purple Hammer needs to be a barrel pick name. Yeah, that's a good barrel pick name. Um, there's so many. I want to make a gravity tractor into a bowling ball. The gravity tractor's got to be a bowling ball, right? What's the whole bowling arsenal? I have a Purple Hammer. Um, hammer Hazmat. Uh, radical hitter, and then I, I have a black widow darkness that's not drilled, it's just kind of like a, a set piece because it's just an overseas, like a set piece ball because it's kind of badass looking. I liked it. Oh, and my I got a Facebook marketplace ball, it was like 50 bucks shipped. Um, uh, roto grip hustle MM. So, like, because I needed something weaker because everything I threw was, like, Brooklyn. All my strikes are Brooklyn, basically. Never shot a 300, but 800 three times? Holy crap. I hate the game. Next barrel pick is um, the third and final backbone bourbon straight bourbon pick. It's going to be nine years old. It's already picked, and it's coming out in March. So, it is... So there was um, Saul gone, or geez, that's the name of the new one. There was Slip and Jimmy, and then the, the second one was Dude, which was just a bowling, um, bowling one. 
And then do I have the third? This is the third sticker. The Backbone Bourbon Nine Year is called Saul Gone. And it is another Better Call Saul, like, uh, you know, what do you call it? Themed barrel pick. Dill note in, in the Lost Monarch. The Lost Monarch has a dill note. I know that like the Emerald Giant would have a dill note, but not that. New Holland Origin pick. Uh, I have to look into it. Maybe it's not out of the question. Pass on a Stag Junior for one ninety nine. Have you had a Stag Junior before? That's a question. If it's something you've always wanted and never could find and that doesn't completely bust your budget like if $199 for a bottle is something that you can do then sure but the only reason I bought the stag 23c at 189 is because I have a channel I wanted and that that's the first one I've ran into in a long time I wanted to review it so yeah <clears throat> purple hazmat sounds like a nickname for well you know <laughs> the hammer hazmat yeah yeah, if you've never had it and you really, really want one, then sure. But don't expect, don't expect the Stag Junior to be to blow your mind. If you've had Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, if you've had 1792 Full Proof, if you've had Old Forster 1920, um, if you've had other barrel strength bourbons, don't expect Stag Junior to be like something that's gonna change your life because it's not. It's just another really good barrel strength bourbon. To get into the stuff that's gonna like change your mind about like to get into the next echelon of whiskey is um you know some of the BTAC stuff. King of Kentucky is like on like the highest of levels kind of thing, but that Stag Jr. lives in the same tier level as you know an Elijah Craig barrel proof or a 1792 full proof, those types of whiskeys. So don't spend two hundred dollars on it, thinking that you're going to get something that is going to change the way you look at bourbon. Would you pay one hundred and fifty for a Jack Daniel's ten or two hundred? I would pay. I'd pay both of those. I'd pay one hundred and fifty for a ten and two hundred for a twelve. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be thrilled. But if if it was the new versions, I would. Um, I wouldn't pay any more than that. I definitely wouldn't pay any more than that. Stag Junior Batch 12 is incredible. Yeah, Stag Junior Batch 9, Batch 12, those are crazy, crazy good. But those back in the day, you know, it's like things to be changing. It's just stag now. I know it's just stag. My back hurts. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. All right. I am going to call it a night. William Miller Weller is generally very, very good, um, but still nothing that's like, I don't know. It's hard to say. The first time I had Buffalo Trace Antique Collection stuff, I thought to myself, oh, it's just extremely good bourbon. It's not like... There are levels to it, but like... It's like the cost, what's it called? The cost of diminishing returns. Is that it? The, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, just because it's like, like it gets so good, right? But then you expect it to be like, you're, all the hype behind it and all like the, the FOMO and all the money. And it's like, you expect it to be like, oh my God, this is fucking crazy good. But it's like, oh no, it's just, it's really, really good, but you get behind, you start to think that it's going to be something that it's not. So don't. I would say go in, go into anything that you haven't had before that you're really looking forward to, with low expectations and hope that those expectations are blown out of the water. If you go into it with too high of expectations, you'll be disappointed with most bourbons, because once you've had like really, really good, semi all right, hard to find whiskey like. The best Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. If you have like a C923 and you're like, wow, that's amazing. What does BTAC taste like? It's got to be a life changer. And you go out and you pay 
thirty dollars or thirty bottles worth of Elijah Craig barrel proof for one and it's thousands of dollars, then you're like, oh, it didn't really, you know. Especially if you do it by yourself. If you do it in a group of people, the law of diminishing returns. That's right, Bruzel. The cost of diminishing, that's not it. I knew it didn't sound right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mom. Yeah, we're, we're uh, you know, not doing fantastic, but we're doing great. We're doing just great. What's up, Brian? It's here, Man and Bourbon. Do you have a Gravity Tractor logo? No, but I need to get one. Um, I was looking on Fiverr the other night for a logo person, but they all seem the same and shitty. There are very few whiskeys that are going to change your life. That's, yeah, for sure. And I don't mean to be a bummer about it. It's just like, I don't want anybody to overspend on something that they are disappointed with because me and other people told them it was going to be life-changing. You know? You had the bad laser code. So did I, Hollywood. So did I, the bad one. All right. I'm going to get out of here, everybody. I will see you next Friday. Another live stream, two more before this first surgery. Um, videos this week, they're coming. Um, there's only one video again this week, which sucks. Thank you, Michael S. Um, I, I thought that this past week was going to be much more video content. But when you have a sick child at home, things change quickly. And that's what happens. So... This coming up week, more more of the good stuff, and we'll see you next Friday for another um, live stream. By the way, if you're not smoking Alec Bradley Cigars, who is a sponsor of tonight's live stream, then what are you doing with your life? Alec Bradley Cigars, best cigars on the planet. <sighs> Janet. And any other name that rhymes with Janet. Damn it. I love Alec Bradley Cigars. And you can tell I mean it by how... Intently, I'm staring into the lens of the camera. I love them. Best of luck on your surgery. Thanks, Chris. I'm out of here. Have an awesome weekend, everybody. Talk to you next week. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs>